initiation into kriya yoga eventually the moment came to file the application form to receive the kriya instructions by mail about 4 months passed as every day i hoped to receive the coveted material finally an envelope arrived i opened it with heightened expectation but was deeply disappointed because it contained nothing but more introductory material from reading the index page i understood that the actual technique would be sent after 4 weeks so for another month i would have to study just the usual nursery rhymes i already knew by heart in the meantime two ministers of py's organization visited our country and i took part in the initiation ceremony after waiting for months it was high time to make an eternal pact with the guru and to be taught the kriya techniques in the only legitimate way and receive his benediction there were about 100 of us who were to be initiated a beautiful room had been rented for the ceremony at a very high price and embellished for the occasion with lots of flowers such as i have never seen even at the most extravagant weddings the introduction to the ceremony was magnificent about 30 people wearing somber uniforms entered the room and lined up with a solemn attitude and joined their hands in prayer It was explained to me that these people belonged to the local group whose leader was a fashion designer and had choreographed that triumphant entrance. The two ministers who had just arrived from abroad walked meekly and bewildered behind them. Then the ceremony began. I accepted without objections their demand that I swear everlasting devotion not only to the Guru Pyai but also to a six master chain of whom Lahiri Mahashaya was an intermediary link. PY was the so-called guru preceptor namely the one who would partially bear the burden of our karma it would have been strange if no one had had doubts about this i remember a lady wondering if PY definitely unable to give any confirmation now being a long time resident in the astral world had really accepted her as a disciple and consequently to be laden with her karma In order to avoid that with such thoughts she weakened the enjoyment of the enticing ceremony I reassured her that she was accepted without fail They explained us that Christ was also part of this chain because he had appeared to Baba ji Lahiri Mahashaya's guru asking him to send emissaries to the west to spread kriya This story caused me no perplexity at all Perhaps I had no desire to think about it to consider the whole mission of kriya diffusion as originating from christ himself was a pleasant idea on the other hand i was too anxious to hear the explanation of the technique which was soon to take place to listen to anything else the introductory talk went ahead in a suggestive way the kriya technique embodied god's most effective blessing toward his privileged creatures humans which exclusively possessed an inner body with seven chakras The mystic seven step ladder of the chakras was the real highway to salvation the fastest and safest my mind was in great expectation for something i had so strongly desired and for which i had seriously been preparing for months it was not what might be called a sacrament that i was submitting to in order to safeguard a family tradition it was the crowning of a definitive choice My heart was immensely happy at the thought of the inner joy that I would gain through the practice of kriya. Finally, after being taught the kriya pranayam, I realized I already knew it. It was the same kundalini breathing technique which I had found a long time ago in my esoteric readings and which prescribes that the energetic current flows all the way inside the spinal column. I have explained that I had not taken that procedure into serious consideration owing to the fact that in PY's book it was written that the energy had to be rotated around the chakras along an elliptical circuit the explanation of the techniques maha mudra and jyoti mudra they never used the more common term yoni concluded the technical instructions each technique's detail was explained in such a way that it would not allow for the smallest variation and In addition, a specific routine was warmly recommended. If the least amount of doubt on the correctness of a certain detail had arisen during the practice, nobody was encouraged even vaguely 
to conduct an experiment and come to a conclusion by himself. The only correct action was to contact the headquarters of our Kriya organization, tell them the problem, and receive further guidelines. This, in effect, was what I always did. I learned to interact only with them. I would instinctively look for their advice as if it were given by perfect beings that could never be wrong. I believe they were channels through which the blessings of the Guru flowed. Besides, I was quite confident that, even if they would not admit it out of humility, they had already reached the highest level of spiritual realization. Official Kriya Routine After Kriya initiation, I followed the counsel of my organization to practice the two techniques Hong So and Om before Kriya Pranayam. With the first technique the breathing was supposed to become more relaxed and create a good state of concentration. Then. I was supposed to listen to the internal sounds. Then there would follow the Mahamudra. Eventually, setting back in a still and stiff position to restore the feeling of sacredness, I was supposed to practice Kriya Pranayam with rigorous respect to all the instructions. To absorb the results of the whole endeavor, after Jyoti Mudra, the Kriya routine would be concluded with a full 10-minute concentration upon Kutistha. In my experience, the two preliminary techniques did not receive the attention they deserved. And the time devoted to the final concentration was too short. During the Hong So technique, the thought that I should interrupt it to start the Om technique brought about a disturbing feeling, hampering my whole surrender to its beauty. The same happened with the procedure of the Om technique. Interrupting it in order to practice Mahamudra. The technique of listening to Om was a complete universe in itself and led to the mystic experience, which is why its interruption was something worse than a simple disturbance. It was illogical, as if recognizing a friend with joyous surprise among a crowd one begins talking with him, then suddenly goes away hoping to meet, quite by chance, that same friend again and get back to where the conversation had previously ended. The sound of Om was the mystic experience itself, the goal I sought. Why should I interrupt that sublime attunement to regain it through another technique? Perhaps because Kriya Pranayam was a higher procedure? Higher! What on earth does that mean? I forced myself into such absurdity for many months. At that time, the idea of using my brain and radically changing the routine seemed to me an act of stupid arrogance. Such was the power of that insanity which in our group was called loyalty. I must acknowledge that unfortunately I had become like one of those animals that, fed by man, tend to forget how to be self-sufficient. When I tried to discuss this problem with other Kriyabins, I noticed an enormous and unreasonable resistance. There were those who were not satisfied with their practice but planned to try it again in the future, while others were not able to even understand what I was saying. Talking with a lady who was a long-time friend of our family, she pretended to listen attentively, but in the end bluntly declared she already had a guru and did not need another. Her remark cut me deeply since my intention was only to have a rational talk which could be inspiring for us both. Apart from this, what sort of friendship can exist between two people when one is so curt? To encounter such episodes confirmed my idea that not being encouraged to trust the validity of self-observation, many friends went on mechanically performing what had often become an empty ritual simply to appease their conscience. With the exception of one person, who harbored really strange ideas about the spiritual path which made me entertain the thought that he might be mentally unstable. These new Kriyaban friends seemed to censor my questioning of techniques, claiming that devotion was much more important. Often they referred to concepts I could hardly link to the practice of yoga, either paramount importance was loyalty toward P.Y. and his organization. Well, one day I decided to use my brain and changed my routine. My Kriya routine became inspired by Patanjali's theory. I decided that the two techniques Hong So and Om had to be practiced either at the end of my Kriya routine or never. 
Having sensitized the spine, I could practice Hong So in the spine. This means watching the breath as if it moved not in and out the lungs but up and down in the spine.